strong that we will need local authority, local government in, uh, in this country will need 8 billion, an injection of 8 billion just to stand still by 2025. And we've had cuts uh, in this document from the LGA of 16 billion over the last decade. And what I think Councillor uh, Gilchrist and Mitchell should be ashamed of, it was your party who went into coalition with the Tory government which made these cuts. So, you know, don't come into this council chamber and lecture us about not spending more money on services. Look to your own party for doing that awful deal you did with the Tories and you have paid the political price for that and should be ashamed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Phil Gilchrist can now have the five minutes to speak to your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's deal with this serious and thoughtful stuff first. Um, I recognise entirely what Councillor Mooney has told us about children's services and her commitment to it. What I do at every meeting I get the chance is to look at the very small print from Ofsted to see the very cautious changing language they have. But I do recognise that with the new team of officers are now tackling some underlying problems. What happened in 2016 and before wasn't reflected in earlier annual reports. The annual report has become an occasion for pointing out everything that members want to see going right. It should also be a chance to analyse where things aren't working well. And it's unfortunate that that issue wasn't spotted early enough or tackled early enough. I know that some officers did spot that and encourage work to take place to start children, turning children's services round at an early stage but clearly in the light of Ofsted it wasn't successful but since then we have been making progress and I pay tribute to those staff that are working hard on that. The latest forward talks about World Council making huge progress in recent years from the brink of government intervention some six years ago. I was a member of that improvement board as well as a member of the current improvement board, the improvement board some six years ago, one of the key conclusions was, uh, if you look at the report again, perhaps half the council hadn't seen it, but at the time there were suggestions by the improvement board chair that the council wasn't accepting that there was a problem. It took some time to get the council to recognise it. It was also a tribute to the work that the staff are doing day to day not get a lot of mention in the report, but I'm aware that at the coal face, at the chalk face, at the ground level, whichever offices they're in, staff are working tirelessly to deliver services. But I do pick up some frustration amongst the staff and the community that staff working at lower levels, even with the pay increase that has been agreed by Council, see substantial pay levels for very high grades of staff and they look at those and think, why aren't some of the posts at lower levels being filled to help us cope with our workload? I want to deal with this issue of basics. I just had some comments made on that. But yes, in February, I was in the newspaper saying we had to get the basics right. It is what I see as a belated recognition. The, the theme didn't emerge to the cabinet report that happened after the elections. And I took some time to look at the 30 odd thousand pounds worth of Mori study that we paid for out of our council taxes. And I took time to look at what was concerning residents. So in Wallasey, 70% of the questionnaire respondents were concerned about food and drinks containers, rather more than concerned about cigarette butts. The same evidence occurred in Birkenhead where the town centre, 71% of the respondents were concerned about food and drinks containers. And out in rural west, 64% concerned about food and drinks containers. So litter, in its general form, remains an issue that's concerning the public. And I will take the chance next week to say that our contractor kingdom should be devoting attention to litter in all its forms. Reference has been made several times tonight to the golf resort a number of concerned members are anxious about what's going on with that project. If we go back to the 2016 report, we were told the plans, our plans were continuing to take shape. In the latest report, we're told of significant progress. We've heard tonight from members who are anxious about the financial status of the uh, possible partner. 
We've heard tonight again about libraries. This council spent perhaps £300,000 on studies. We're told that that is informing the issue, but we haven't yet seen the detail and members are anxious about that. And on the potholes, page 64, Councillor Whittingham says that he's investing more than £5 million on improving potholes on the roads. I know what he meant to say, Mr Mayor, but uh, it would ought to be clearer. On the issue of money, then of course I might happily remind the Leader of Council that a general election took place. Prior to that general election, the Liberal Democrats made it clear they didn't believe austerity should carry on in that form. They stood up for local government and have done ever since. Now the coalition ended. Our concern at the moment is how much money will Brexit siphon off by really, uh, causing hiccups in our economy and money siphoned off to deal with that rather than into our services. To conclude, Councillor Williamson talks about us receiving no core grants from central government by 2020. As mentioned in January, my colleagues will support every effort this council makes to get a replacement grant. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Are there any members who wish to speak to this motion and amendments? You have up to three minutes to address the council. Councillor Stuart Kelly. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. I, I'll, I'll try to be. I mean, I welcome the um, the layout and the, and the language of the. Uh, delivery plan. I just wanted to process on the delivery plan. Um, a number of members, um, Bernie Mooney, for example, were very clear uh, major projects, the leader made a uh, major project, Councillor Davis, Joyce Davis, uh, to deliver the local plan. A specific and clear um, commitment. Um, we can be in no doubt of what it is they're going to spend the bulk of their, their time on in the coming year. Same Go through the, the reports, great jobs, uh, long term financial plan, etc. I have to say, I'm not entirely clear uh, with uh, Matthew Patrick's ma major project, um, Clearly Green Will. Um, that's more of a slogan, I would suggest to him. And tonight, John, the questions, you know, he's been questioned on issues of recycling, which would, would in itself uh, present itself as a major project, on issues of of, uh, of litter, uh, which, uh, which would uh, present itself as a major point, if we were really serious, that is, about reducing uh, actual litter uh, on our, our streets. Uh, the same, I'm sorry, could be said of um, Councillor Brightmore, stronger, more sustainable services. What? what what's that? I mean, I guess this major project will actually be what, um, uh, what, what Councillor Jeff Green referred to, what this is, uh, in terms of the leisure review. But why doesn't it say the leisure review is your main, major project? I, I only make this up. I find it's Stuart Whittingham wishes to keep Wivel moving, which it's a fine aspiration, but as we heard in his answer to Councillor Graham earlier, he has no control over what, no control whatsoever over, over the decisions that either Mayor's each other take in terms of subsidised services, and certainly no control over the decisions that the private sector will, will take in terms of running the, uh, uh, the bus services. So the play, if you like, to the executive is, you, you know, I, I like the layouts, but I would like the major projects to be a little bit clearer, certainly those that I've highlighted. And I would also like the reports that the cabinet members bring to us at subsequent council meetings to refer to these so that we get updates at every council meeting. Councillor Gilchrist has criticised in the past the, uh, the layouts of the reports cabinet members have been bringing to us over the, um, uh, over the previous year, the links to Will of Year and Will Now and what have you. But if this is to mean anything in terms of a delivery plan, we need to be, or the executive need to be, referring back to what they have said to us tonight in terms of the action plan and delivery plan, and ensuring that we receive updates as to where they are with their major projects and the other, to a lesser extent, the other to do list that sits there. I see that. I beg your pardon, I can't say it with the glare, but I, 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 see, that, I see that I might as well upset Councillor Patrick in, 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 uh, in terms of, uh, of, of my description of this major project. It's just clarity that I'm after. It's the job of the opposition and other backbench members to hold the executive to account for the things that they have said in this report that they brought to us today. And I'd quite like to do that That's honestly. It. Thank you. Councillor Matthew, no, don't want to reply. No. Anybody else want to speak in the debate? 
No, so we go to the seconder, Councillor Dave Mitchell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll pick up on my two, two points. Basically, it's getting back to basics and doing the right thing in the right place. Uh, I'll pick on two particular issues that are affecting the local authority at the moment, and it's in the basics. It's the people that deal with the people at the, at the face, uh, the cold face, as you say. Um, what we need to do is address the problems that are affecting most of the people. I'll take one issue along in relation to planning issues. Uh, we have a high rate engineer who took out of retirement. There was no correlation of anybody following in this place. We've ended up employing an ex employee of the council who left and went to work to the private sector, and now we're paying more for him than we were for the original one. There's no succession plan. There doesn't seem to be any succession plan going on in any way or form at the lower levels in the authority. At the same time, we saw last week uh, an advertisement for two senior posts in the local authority. I think we'd be better off looking at the coal face and making sure we've got the right people in the right place to deal with the issues that are affecting the people, the general public. Another one I'll pick up on is in, in relation to um, planning enforcement. Planning enforcement used to have 12 people in the department. It's now down to two. If you've got a major problem in relation to planning, you've got to wait for anybody to deal with any of the issues. They actually closed the book November 1917. That's where they're up to in dealing with the issues. These are the main things that we should be looking at. Not the grandiose things that we're going to plan for golf courses or anything like that. These are the things that affect the people in the world on the floor. And we should be dealing with those issues. And we should be seeing a lot more that about that in the report that we get in front of us. Uh, last point, we're constantly told, we're constantly told it's because we were in coalition. They do forget though that when they were in control of the government, they brought in the Gershon savings, 7% year on year for three years, before Gordon Brown realised how he was decimating the local authorities. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor George Davis, three minutes. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, just, just to conclude, Spolton, where Dave started from, and I did write it down, um, get the basics right. I think that's absolutely admirable, and that's what we're trying to do. Because I mean, at the end of the day, people only want realistically the bins empty. They want the streets clean, um, and to do these sorts of things, Dave, you need the money, and the money's been taken away from us. Two hundred and fifty million of it. You talk about planning enforcement. You also talk about the people in in the highways departments that have gone and, and, and not been replaced and has to be brought back. Absolutely right. We're actually rock bottom, and do people realise that? And I said, every member in this council here should understand the dilemma that we are in in this council. And so, so I just want to quote from something that my leader made before about Lord Porter. So Lord Porter says, We've reached the point where councils will no longer be able to support our residents as they expect including our most vulnerable, let alone help the country to prosper. Councils have shouldered more than their fair share of austerity and have tried to reduce any impact on residents, but there is only so much that can be done and the financial challenges they are facing growing. But by properly funding local services and giving councils the power to work on behalf of their communities, local government can be the driving force for a new chapter in our country's history. It will ensure residents can live with dignity, achieve their goals and aspire to do more than just get by, as well as helping to reduce pressures on the rest of the public sector. Quoted by Barry, uh, sorry, by Barry. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Lord yeah, the Tory Chair of the LGA. And I think that's something, I know what it's a problem, but well, I, I think that's what we all need to concentrate on. That's what we're here for. We're here to look after the people of the world. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Phil Davis is proposed that you may have right to reply up to five minutes. Yeah, well, I just wanted to say, I mean, Stuart, a really interesting intervention, but actually none of that was in your amendment. Um, 
Um, but we'll take on board the letter. I, I, I don't know whether you speak to each other in the late yeah. um, But you made some you made some useful points. I think about format and uh, reporting back. But actually, I'm surprised if you know it's a good point. But none of that is in your leaders' amendment. So please, can you speak to each other more in future? And so it does appear in your amendment because we might have voted for it oh, if it had. Oh, yeah. um, so, uh, Miss Miss Mr. So, Miss Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I do believe I do believe this report is worthy of uh, support. Um, yes, we've still got a lot of work to do, but we've made I think um, impressive progress over the last three years, and um, uh, I think we will continue to uh, have to be more innovative in terms of bringing new income streams into the council. I haven't heard one idea yet from the benches opposite about how we can bring. What what are your ideas for bringing? New income into the council. I've heard lots of opposition, but nothing at all. Nothing at all. So, so, Mr. Mayor, I think this this annual report is is worthy of support. Thanks, Stuart, for your interventions. Sorry, it's not in your amendment. We won't be supporting it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, voting on the amendment. All those in favour of the amendment moved by Councillor Phil Gilchrist, please indicate. Those against? <coughs> Extensions. So the amendment is lost 25361. So now uh, voting on the motion. All those in favour of the motion moved by Councillor Phil Davis. Please indicate. Those against? Abstentions? Thank you. So the motion is carried. 36, 28, 25, 36, 25, 1. Uh, now, item 6B, Statutory Scrutiny Officers Overview and Scrutiny Annual Report 2017-18. Councillor to move, please. <coughs> so that is uh, Councillor Mike Sullivan and a seconder. <coughs> seconded by Councillor Anita Leach. Uh, all those in favour of noting the statutory scrutiny officers overview and scrutiny and the report 2017-18, please raise your hands. All those, yes, are those in favour? Noted. Clearly carried. Extension, one extension, yes. Okay. Uh, so now we move on to... Item 7, members' questions. Members, general questions. Two questions have been received. First of all, Councillor Phil Gilchrist to Councillor Matthew Patrick. Councillor Gilchrist. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is to do with the issue of dog control. The introduction to the survey on dog control states, quote, the data that you submit will be confidential, and this information will only be accessible to World Council. The data will be analysed and used to inform a decision on a proposed public spaces protection order. A final report will be presented to Cabinet, but will include no personal data. The survey also asks for a name and the first part of a postcode. Can the results of the survey be circulated to councillors before the Cabinet report is published, so that non-Cabinet members can consider the findings? Information sent to members on 5th of June stated that some informal local and national stakeholder engagement has already taken place with positive feedback received. Mr Mayor, can any official responses from the RSPCA and similar organisations also be published and circulated for consideration at an early stage prior to the publication of the Cabinet report? Oh, and that is for, uh, sorry, 
Councillor Matthew Patrick. Yes. Yes. Second question. Um, Councillor Leslie Rennie to Councillor Paul Stewart. Councillor Rennie. I'm obviously just by way of um, a written question and uh, it's clearly uh, in two parts. The first part is um, in response to a consultation exercise and the question was whether we're aware of council responded to the consultation by the Ministry of Justice on the draft domestic abuse bill that actually closed on 31st of May. And if so, um, can the Cabinet members share the authorities' response with us? And if not, can we advise why? And the second part of the question, when we're talking about being short of money, there is an offer from the government, um, and I'm asking if we're a Borough Council intends to submit a bid for a share of the £19 million fund established by the Minister of, House, Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government, which was only just announced on the 2nd of July, which is to expand support available for the uh, many survivors of domestic abuse. Councillor Paul Stewart, respond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, and thank you, Leslie, for the advice just as a question. Um, to the first part of the question, uh, this consultation was responded to on the 31st of May 2018, and the answers to the consultation were formed from a panel of representatives from the domestic abuse subgroup. And I can provide a copy of the response submitted uh, to Council of Any and uh, Council members, if they so wish. Uh, and the second part of that is I've uh, added um, to the agenda for the World Domestic Abuse Group meeting this coming Wednesday to seek the partnership's views with regards to a potential bid. Uh, this funding is directed more towards community and third sector organisations and all bids are to be submitted via their respective LAs. The maximum you can bid is for £100,000 but you can join up with other neighbouring authorities for larger bids. We will have successfully done this in the past and joined up with local and noted councils to deliver a larger amount for refuge accommodation <coughs> and some support services. So, item 8 vacancies. Agenda item 8 on the agenda. We have three changes listed on the agenda and supplementary papers. Councillor Liz Gray to replace Councillor Brian Kenny on the Standing Advisory Committee on Religious Education. Councillor Steve Williams to replace Leslie Rennie on the Member Equipment Steering Group. Councillor George Davis to be appointed to the North West Housing Consortium Stroke North West Housing Forum. I've also been notified of the following changes. Councillor Gillian Wood to replace Councillor Warren Ward on the Environment Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Councillor Sharon Jones to replace Warren Ward on the Business Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Councillor Jeanette Williamson to replace Warren Ward on the Member Equipment Steering Group. Councillor Liz Gray to replace Warren Ward on the Young People's Advisory Group. Councillor Tony Cottier to replace Sharon Jones as Deputy on the Business Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Councillor Liz Gray to replace Warren Ward as Deputy on the Planning Committee. Sharon Jones to replace Warren Ward as Deputy on the Pensions Committee. And are these some late ones? Yes. Oh, that's more vacancy. Just read these now. Mr. Mayor, sorry, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Oh, I beg your pardon. Just pass them to the uh, sorry. director of government. Sorry. Right. Okay. So, do we have a mover for those changes? Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Davis, and seconded by Councillor Ron Abbey. Uh, are, are we agreed? Agreed. Thank you. So, item nine: matters requiring approval or consideration by the council. Councillors, we now turn to item 9 on pages 97 to 158, that's 97 to 158 of the Council Agenda, which includes various recommendations requiring approval or consideration by the Council. Firstly, item 9A on pages 97 to 142 of the Agenda, that's starting at page 97. With reference to Audit and Risk Management Committee, 12th of March 2018, minute 68 refers, 